<clears throat> All right. Good morning or afternoon, boys and girls. It is uh, another beautiful, cool day. Not quite winter, not quite uh, summer. Actually, a few days of fall. Today, I would like to talk to you about um, a problem that I ran across on a unit a number of years ago, and I completely forgotten about it until I was digging through one of my junk piles back there looking for a part for uh, my air compressor. And I ran across this, uh, this relay that you see here. And uh, <laughs> then I remembered all the trouble I had. This, you don't see these very often. I believe they're on carriers. I believe that's what the unit was on. Anyway, I got on this call and I'm out there and the unit keeps uh, it was a heating season. The unit keep, uh, kept uh, blowing the fuse on the control board. And I pulled my hair out. I know it was at least an hour before I finally figured out what was going on. And I backtracked it down finally to this little bastard here. Uh, every time I turned the heat on, the thing would pop the fuse and I checked looking for shorts here, shorts there, short in the wire. Everywhere I kept looking like normal places you look for uh, shorted wiring that would uh, cause a fuse to go. And uh, checking the contactor outside on the heat pump, checking the low voltage line, see if a dog had chewed him or a mouse, all kinds of things. And then uh, and I still don't remember what made me decide to check these. And the um, uh, these little boogers are in the air handler to cut on the heat strips. And uh, if I remember correctly, it was the heat strips. But you'll notice it's a little bit different than a regular relay. It has a circuit board on top. Now, the first thing your, your brain thinks as a technician is, oh, it's some sort of time delay device. It's going to get voltage and it's a time delay yada yada to bring the heat strips on. Well that wasn't the case and uh, of course I didn't realize that at the time and the only way I finally figured out that it was uh, this relay causing the problem was <clears throat> I decided to see you know you're breaking it down trying to decide to see what section of the heat call was causing the fuse to go. So, um, you know, I go in the house, I change the fuse, I crank it up uh, enough for the thing to come on, four, five, six, seven degrees, whatever, and uh, pow, blows the fuse. So I thought, well, okay, let's try something different. Let's just get the heat pump to come on without the heat strips and see what happens. Um, so I did that, I bumped it up one, two degrees, usually heat pump is you're safe two degrees without getting the, the heat strips to come on. So I did that and it worked fine. I'm like, okay, so I let it run, bumped up a little bit more a little later when the temperature met, no problem at all. As soon as I jacked it up high enough to get the heat strips to come on, it popped it. And uh, it turns out um, I just randomly started pulling, actually I think I pulled all of the uh, low voltage leads off of all of the relays in there for the heat strips and no problems at all. I started, I, then I worked my way through and finally figured out it was this one. Well it turns out it's not because I was going to think oh well I'll try putting a new relay on first and I got to looking at it and it's a little bit different. This is not a uh, this little board comes off here this is not a timer board this is, uh, if you look carefully, it has four diodes and it's a bridge rectifier, which means if, when I got to looking closely, this is not a normal 24, 28 volt AC relay. This is a DC relay. Why the hell they decided to put a DC relay in a system where everything else is AC is beyond me, but they did. So you have full wave bridge rectifier uh, mounted on here 
and they bring the power into the two top pins. It uh, goes to the circuit, converts it to DC, <laughs> rectifies it to DC to close the contacts, and uh, or the coil, close the coil and close the contacts, or open the contacts, depending on what you were using it for. So this thing, anyway, that turned out to be what it was. So something for you guys to watch out for. The odds you running across them, something like this is pretty slim, but uh, you never know. And I haven't figured out what's wrong with this actual. Well, I haven't checked the. I haven't checked the diodes, but uh, I did take a meter and uh, check the. Uh, I did check uh, the, uh, the the open normally open normally closed positions, which it's saying. Uh, give me five seconds here. Get my headset so I can see a little bit better. All right, because you know my glasses aren't enough. <laughs> it uh, it's saying the two here are normally closed and these are normally open, and uh, so it's just very very strange trying to figure out what's going on. Well, I put uh, so I know this is shot. I put uh, I put the meter on uh, continuity, and no matter. No matter where I stuck the uh, the thing, I don't get anything anywhere. So it's which is pretty freaky. Uh, so they're stuck somewhere in the middle. I haven't taken hammer. I might cut it open for fun later. But anyway, something to watch out for. And I thought uh, you might be interested in uh, seeing one of those. Like I said, I think they only put them on for a short period of time, so you probably won't run across them. But uh, there you go. Something a little bit new. And uh, don't know why you couldn't run some AC voltage to uh, put a normal relay on if you had to in a pinch. Um, thanks for watching, and we will bring you a new video pretty soon. Take care.